it looks like you're working on some organic chemistry. Hi, I'd like to go over with you a question on organic chemistry mechanisms. This summer of 2019, more students in my group got a 30 than I've ever seen before in the organic chemistry section. So anybody who ever used to say my work is overkill, we all want to thank you very much. Come on over and I'll show you some more overkill. Okay, Dr. Amano. I'd like to show you a problem in which we take this molecule here and I want to convert it into this molecule and we're going to be using sodium acetate. Now, tosylate is a very good leaving group as you probably do know, which is a sure bet question on the DAD or the old exam, because when it leaves it's very stabilized because of resonance. Now, anytime you see a result like this, now if you didn't know better and you simply did an SN2 attack, you would not get this product. That you look at this and you say to yourself, this looks awful weird. Anytime something looks weird, entertain the possibility of what we call an SN2 intramolecular rearrangement. So what we're going to do is take a look at this SN2 intramolecular rearrangement. What I did here is tosylid leaves. Now notice that these two are on opposite sides, which means that this is going to be what we call a backside attack. Why backside attack? Because this is where the antibonding orbital is going to be located. So what I do is I attack from this portion of the molecule here, these electrons, and I kick out the tosylate. And as you can see, this is an SN2 intramolecular, so this dash now becomes a wedge. I hope you can get to this point by simply attaching this to this and kicking this out. Now, once you get to this, I drew a resonance form which simply means that I move the electrons over, and then I did it once more, and I got three resonance forms. I think you can get to that point quite easily. Now, of these three resonance forms, I always like to attack the one that's the least stable. And usually the least stable is the row to the major product, and what I did here was simply attack with the acetate, and if you matched it up, voila. We hit it in one shot. So this is pretty easy. Let's do one more reaction in part B. Now again, you look in here, you see the nitrogen with the two ethyls, and all of a sudden there's this crazy rearrangement. You're like, what the hell is going on here? If this is the nucleophile, as you can see, if you were to replace the chlorine with an OH, certainly you wouldn't have got this kind of scrambling. Anytime you see scrambling or unusual stereochemistry, Think of an intramolecular attack. So, lo and behold, look at what I did. I rewrote it. Notice I'm putting the chlorine um, to the opposite side so I can do a backside attack. By the way, right here would be the antibonding orbital that I would be hitting. Notice when I hit the antibonding orbital, we kick out the chlorine and I form this kind of ring system. As crazy as this looks, all we need to do is do an attack. There's the attack. Electrons move out, and if you match it up, voila. I hope that helps. These were two challenging problems, and I admit they were hard, but they will give you some really good insight. So remember, anytime you see scrambling or the result looks bizarre, always entertain the possibility of this what we call neighboring group effect or an SN2 intramolecular rearrangement. All right, I hope this helps on your road to overkill. Overkill is a wonderful thing, and this summer, like I said, we've never had such great results, so I want to congratulate you guys, especially the guys from my New York group. Good going, guys. Dr. Romano, I've seen all those high scores. You think I'm going to get a 30? Actually, I don't. Good day to you. She's Dr. Romano. I'm trying really hard. Good day to you, sir.